Today we are making gnocchi di ricotta, ricotta gnocchi, a beautiful, delicious, soft pasta that you can serve with sage and butter, with a tomato sauce base, or you can serve it with beautiful four cheeses base. This is a pasta that everybody loves. Everyone on your table is going to give you a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make together the gnocchi di ricotta. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate. It's gnocchi di ricotta time, oh yes. Suzanne asked me to make gnocchi di ricotta tonight and that's what I'm making for dinner. Beautiful, soft, little pillows, oh yes. To make the gnocchi di ricotta we need simple ingredients. So we need a top quality ricotta guys and I've got 500 grams here of ricotta and that way you know you want to make enough the, uh, for dinner of course but also you want to make extra if you have extra you can freeze okay we have about three to four spoons of pecorino cheese you can use parmigiano if you like one egg and 300 grams of zero zero flour it is important that you use a good flour organic eggs at the same time what we need to do is very simple so here we have a ricotta right see the beautiful ricotta what i'm going to do i'm going to break one egg in there just like that and then i want to put the flour a little bit at a time just a little bit at a time don't put too much so we put a little bit of the flour now now lots of people at this point use salt i've stopped using salt for pasta i used to but I prefer to put pecorino, it gives more flavor, and I put a lot of salt when I cook the pasta, in the pasta water. So here I've got the pecorino, so three spoons of pecorino. Now with a fork we want to mix our ingredients until it becomes nice and moist, okay? So you want to break the ricotta. You can use a stand mixer if you find it easier, but this is something that I believe you need to make it with your hands. Now let's put more flour. It is important that you put flour a little bit at a time because that's, uh, that's how you're going to combine all the ingredients together by doing this a little bit at a time. Like, wait, like when you're making pizza. See, you don't want your dough to be extremely soft. Otherwise the pasta can break easily and we don't want that. We don't, we don't forget it's a pasta. You want the pasta to be firm. And now we can start using our hands. So use your hands to mix the ingredients together, just like that. And then we're going to use the board. So here, at this point, see, put everything on the board and I mix. I'm gonna create a dough. See how soft this is? It's like a Play-Doh at the moment. What we want to create is we want to create a beautiful, firm, but soft dough to make a gnocchi. As you can see, there is not much flour left on the board. It's, it is absorbing everything, as you can see. And the dough is combining very well together. You can only feel this with your hands. The stand mixer won't be able to feel it for you. When do we know when we are finished? Well, you do know when we have a nice silky dough. So at the moment we have created the gluten that we need. We have the proteins in there. We're using a soft flour for this recipe and the soft flour is zero zero flour, which is nice, soft, tender. You cannot really use semolina for this because semolina is a, it makes the pasta, you know, harder, drier, and um, it takes way too long to cook, you know, and instead, this is a soft pasta that you don't want the pasta to be al dente to your food. So as you can see, a dough is ready. Now this dough, I just want the dough to relax, to rest for a little bit, okay? It takes no time as you can see, I just want the dough to rest. We just want the ingredients to make love together, to relax together before we start rolling. After five minutes, take it off, 
So the door is relaxed and it is much better. Just get a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, what you can use, you can easily use a bottle of wine, okay? You want to make sure you use flour, and flour it becomes your a flour it becomes your best friend right now. Put flour on top, turn it around, just like this. Put more flour on top, and then we stretch it. You don't want the pasta to get stuck on the board. And now we stretch this dough until we get about one inch. We want the dough to be about one inch thick. The reason why we do this is because we don't want the gnocchi to be huge. So once we have this done, what we do is, with a knife, get a good knife, and we want to cut, we want to cut strips. Okay, just like this. See, in no time I'm making pasta. So now we put this on the side. We get a little, again, flour is your best friend right now, okay? So what we do, we put it there, and we start creating a little snake. So we roll from the middle, roll like this, right from the middle, and we create a little pillow. Little snake, see that? So let's try to be even. So let's do one side first. So let's spread the dough the way to the side. And don't worry if it's so sort of bigger or smaller, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's handmade, and when it's handmade, it's not perfect. And then what we do, you can use a knife or you can use this. We just cut, we just cut it like this. We just cut little pillows like this. You can do this size. You can do it straight, just like this, or you can do it like diagonal, like Nona does, just like this. It's really personal how you want to make your gnocchi. This is how simple it is to make ricotta gnocchi. This is just ricotta and dough. Isn't this amazing, guys? And they're not too soft, like they're not sticky. And that's what you want. That's what you want to achieve, this kind of result. See, this is the Abruzzo cut, diagonal. That's the normal cut, the average cut. The other thing you can do on the gnocchi is that, see, you have the gnocchi here. You can press on top of the fork and that's what you get. See, you get that and it will absorb a little bit more sauce if you like. Now look how wonderful these gnocchis are. Look how beautiful. They're not sticky at all. They are perfect, perfectly delicious. And what I can do now with this is very simple. I can freeze them just in a tray or I'm ready to cook them. Now, how do we know how much is for per person? I will get one handful and that's enough for, for one person, okay? So two handful will be enough for two people. It's a different recipe. So when you use normal gnocchi, we are talking about potatoes gnocchi and the texture is different. And I have to be honest with you, I think it is more difficult to make potato gnocchi because if you don't cook the potatoes right, if you don't let them rest, if you don't let it uh, cool down, you can make a big you mistake. Forget about it. Yeah, that's right. And this is very basic, and I think this is um, kids can do this. It's actually that much, that easy, that fun that kids can do it easily. The question is, are we gonna cook them in the sauce, in a cheese sauce, or just with butter and sage? What do we do? How do we cook the gnocchi? So now with this gnocchi, what we do is we put them straight into the water, boiling water with a lot of salt, about one big tablespoon of salt, and we boil it, okay? The gnocchi will go at the bottom of the pot. It will be right at the bottom of the pot. And what happens is you don't have to do anything. When they are ready, they will come all the way to the top. And when they are coming to the top, what you do, you take them out with a strainer and you put it straight into the sauce. Now, this is a soft pasta. Don't expect something to the tooth, not al dente. So I recommend you not to cook it too much in the sauce. And you need to be very gentle in the sauce because you can break it, okay? Avoid to use spoons or forks when you mix it with the sauce. The other thing you can do, you can freeze it. And when I freeze it, what I like to do is I like to get a, a flat tray just like this. I put baking paper on top. And what I do is I just put a gnocchi on top and I let it freeze. I don't want to put them in a Ziploc bag or, or in a container yet. What I want to do, I want to freeze them just the way they are. Once they're frozen, we are going to put them in a Ziploc bag or in a, in a normal plastic container, okay? And when you want to eat them, you cook it straight from frozen into the boiling water. So, so yeah, this, this way, they're not stuck with each other and they will freeze individually. This is a very important step. 
Now it's time to plate them in a beautiful plate. Yeah, look how beautiful they are. The difficult part now is, do I eat it straight from the pan or from the plate? Well, we're sharing this with Suzanne tonight, so Suzanne, that's for you. And as you know, guys, I love my cheese. So here I've got kilos and kilos of pecorino cheese, which I'm going to, come and have a look, look, which I'm going to spread right on top, sprinkle on top. We love pecorino in this house. There's never enough pecorino. And then we decorate it with a nice basil leaf. Now is the test tasting. Let's see. See the pillow, I can tell is not extremely soft, which we don't want that. It's still a pasta. Hmm. It melts in your mouth easily. Look how quickly it melts. Already disappeared. It tastes like gnocchi, like potato gnocchi, but it's not made with potatoes. It's made with ricotta. It's fascinating, isn't it? These beautiful pillows, made in no time, much, much easier than potato gnocchi, and they taste the same. Mm. And I think the sauce is perfect. See, I love butter and sage, but when you serve this pasta with the sauce, absorbs the sauce, I think there's nothing better than that. And I do have the basil sauce on my YouTube channel. You have a combination of a great basil sauce, and I think these are the best ricotta gnocchi recipe you can find online. Honestly, I'm very proud of this, and I can tell you loud, these are gonna change your life. Make sure you try them. Mm. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. I'm going to eat everything. Susanna, are you gonna have some or can I eat everything? If you leave some for me. Mm. Mm. They are sensational, Susan. This is Susan's favorite. Thank you for asking, Susan. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for making that. Mm. Yum.